Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Welfare Fish. Before we get into today's farming methods on the Division 1.8 update, I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, I hope that you know you guys got it. You, you guys got it. Good job, Fish. Really good job. Opening to the video. Uh, I hope that you guys got what you want for Christmas and that you're enjoying time with family. And also, I appreciate you guys tuning into today's video as well. It means a lot. Um, but yeah, so and if you don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays. Um, you know, just and hope you're enjoying that holiday time. I know a lot of people are on break right now, so if you're on break from school, enjoy that break while it lasts, because I'm in the same boat as you guys. But that's all besides the point of today's video. I mean, it's not beside the point, but I mean, you guys know what I'm saying. Thank you guys for your support on yesterday's video as well. I'm glad the division's kind of gonna have a place here on the channel for a little bit. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna be talking about different farming methods here in the division 1.8. There's gonna be three that I'm talking about. Two are like base game and one is DLC related and it's going to be a lot of fun. The first method we're going to hop into is the resistance reward farm, um, which some of you guys may know what I'm talking about already, some of you guys may not, so that's why we're explaining it. Um, as you guys can see, we're on resistance carrier right now, carrier resistance, whatever you want to refer to it as. And the way this farm works is you're going to get into a team, hopefully it's a team with like your friends, and you, that way you don't get bored and you have a fun time, because doing a friend is going to be a little bit hard and difficult, especially if they don't know what's going on. But hop in with your friends, because that way you guys can share loot between each other as well. And you're going to hop in, you're going to play on carrier, you're going to go into the first room, you're going to spend all your points on doors and doors only, that should be your main priority. So you're going to open up the docks, then you're going to go all the way down to the end and open up the bay 2 door. Inside the bay 2, there's going to be this container, you can actually see it right in front of my person past the boss. It's like, the, it, you saw it, if you saw it for a second, good job. Uh, you're going to open up that container, which is 2,500 points, and then inside that container is going to be a 6,000 point box, which has a very high chance of, got, of dropping classifieds or exotics. And just to kind of say, when I say high chance, that's all I've ever gotten out of it when I open it is classifieds or exotics. And then you're going to he go ahead and after you open up that and you get the like reward, you're going to be like, hey, I got the reward. Cool. And that sh this should all take you about wave 10. And then you can wipe yourself on wave 11, which is cool because then you get the tier 1 and tier 2 caches from the bosses as well. So you're also getting loot from that, plus any field proficiencies that you get while you're doing this. And other like west side pier like assignment caches, so you end up getting a decent amount of loot while doing it. And you kind of wipe yourself on wave 11 and start over again as you see us doing in this clip of video. And the reason why this is just so good is because getting a classified or exotic every time is really good, plus all the caches, and it's very easy as well. And it's kind of a quick couple things for you guys to kind of note as well. Uh, you guys, if you need to get ammo, you can get ammo. I mean, it's not like it's like restricted. You can still do it, it's just like maybe not in the same amount of time. But you're going to see us even open up the reward right around here, and I get a uh, classified final measure out of it, which is really good. And just a quick note for you guys if you're new to the game, classified it, a classified piece of gear, if you don't know what that means, it's got a little folder icon to it, as you'll see whenever we open this up after we get that 100 points. Um, we're going to open up this up, and you'll see it drop, and that's kind of how you know that something's classified, is that little folder icon next to it. I just got a other quick couple things for you guys to kind of note about all of this. Um, the data breach waves, like for uh, wave four and wave eight, you can milk them. Some videos will tell you to milk, go ahead and milk those waves out as long as possible. Some videos will tell you, hey, don't do it. But um, what I can tell you guys for sure is that it doesn't matter either way. You can do either or. I've done it either or. I've milked the waves and I haven't milked the waves and I still get there on wave 10 and I open up the box. I do know it's a lot easier if you milk the waves. What will happen is if you milk the data breach waves, you actually give yourself a little bit more points. So you have a little bit more room to buy ammo and maybe the turd if you need some help out during like wave 9 on the contamination wave and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of the one benefit of like milking out the waves, but it will take a little bit longer, obviously. Uh, that's, that's kind of a note for you guys. And everything I'm talking about right now here in the game will be down in the description below for you guys to go ahead and be like, hey, what, what did he all just say in that video? And it'll all be there, like, on carrier, what doors to open, what their point value is, uh, why you should do it, like, kind of things to watch out for. And it'll all be down in the description below for you guys to read. Go ahead and try this out with your friends, though, because it's a lot of fun and it works out very well, especially if, like, you know, kind of like the horde mode. And it gives you a good way to go ahead and get classified gear. So, there's that. And that's kind of the first method that I am talking about here in this video so let's move on to the next one guys all right guys method number two in our video here today is farming the dark zone and there are a lot of different ways to farm the dark zone there's a lot of reasons why the dark zone is really good to farm and one of the main reasons is division tech which is super super important here in the division 1.8 uh, just for optimization optimizationing optimizing your gear and making sure that it's all good and ready to go uh, and so you get the high gear score you get that high damage value and you're good to go there are a couple different routes that I run in the Dark Zone that you guys can run as well. Uh, I used to run like the majority of this run that you see me do now, which is going to construction site, blockade, the library, the sports store, refueling station, and kind of like running that whole loop of like those couple landmarks. I don't run that too too much anymore because they're very spread out, so you gotta like run to them. Uh, 
one of the other loops that I run is up in DZ7 because all the landmarks there are very close together. And there seems to be a correlation. I don't know if maybe it's just like my superstition or my RNG of like running up in the higher areas, having a higher chance of classifieds and exotics to drop. I'm not even sure if that's like a guarantee, like the higher in the DZ you are, the better you chance you get of that kind of stuff. But last night when I was farming up in DZ7, um, I was getting like a classified or exotic almost every single landmark drop. So it's very good for that as well. Um, so this is a place to get classifieds, exotics, and um, division tech, geez, hopefully I can talk, and getting that division tech as well because it's very, very good, very plentiful. Another way that you can go ahead and farm division tech in the dark zone if you choose to do so is by farming the sealed caches. Both high end and um, the teal gear set caches will give you um, division tech. High end caches give you two to five division tech, and then teal gear set caches give you a solid. Let's see, like I think it's two to eight. I think it's two to eight division tech um, from those as well. So that's a really good way to farm with division tech if you choose so. Um, another way that you can farm, go ahead and farm in the dark zone is by farming the dark zone supply drops. I mean, there's supply drops, they follow the sky. They also have a boss that spawns with them and the loot you get out of the supply drop as well. And another thing to look for in the dark zone is contamination events because those bosses, like they have a lot of bosses and those bosses usually drop caches and you can also get classifieds from them to drop. And at the end of those events, you also get like classified loot. So that's where I've gotten some of my loot as well. But as you can tell, the way I, the, the amount of times I'm saying classified and exotic, you do get a lot of gear that is classified and exotic out of this farming method here in the dark zone. Uh, I have a lot of friends who also say going manhunt can be a good way to farm up for loot. So first you get to like tier five and then go ahead and like go to the area. I'm not a big PvP person, that's why I'm you see me using my defense build here in the dark zone, uh, just because it's one of the build, it's one of the only six piece builds I have right now, and it's also just really good for PvE events. I'm able to help my friends out, carry through, draw aggro and stuff like that, which I'll actually be making a video on this build probably in the next two like one to two days which just kind of depend on how everything goes down but yeah that's the dark zone guys hopefully you under like everything you need to know that's some of the like the loops and the farming methods will be down in the description below same as the uh resistance stuff and yeah let's move on to the next topic of the video the next farming method all right guys so the last method we're going to talk about here in this video is the underground you guys saw the underground in my video yesterday and here's the underground again the underground is a great place to farm especially if running three phase like what i'll tell you to run is three phase five directive operations any operation really works but it's just like the longest and the most xp so you get division like i mean not division you get underground caches plus everything else that you get so you're running three bosses plus the hunters that you might run into in three phases and it just kind of works out as well uh, you guys saw it in my video, there's not really much to explain, I'll put everything down in the description below, same as everything else, being like, hey, this is what you should do in the underground to make sure that your farming methods work out really well. And I've had a lot of people get the house out of this, um, like other areas as well, a lot of people actually tell you this is the, one of the better places and the best place to get the house. I'm not really sure, I think it's just RNG, and it's kind of just how it works, you know what I mean? Everything drops from everywhere now, so it just kind of works out that way. But yeah, so there's just that simple fact of... Go ahead and farm it, check out the underground. Of course, if you don't have the DLC, then this doesn't really apply to you, unfortunately. But it may apply to you if you get the DLC. Because, you know, the game, and also I checked the prices, and I'll tell you guys this much right now. I checked the prices. It's actually cheaper to get, on Xbox, at least, to get the full game and the season pass bundled together at, like, for $29. Because the base game itself is $30, and the season pass is $16, as I mentioned yesterday. So if you guys are watching this video and like, hey, this game looks kind of cool. You can get it while it's on sale instead of getting it at its full price. Yeah. But yeah, farming underground is kind of the way to go, and I mean, not kind of the way to go, it is one of the ways to go in this whole video. I've explained to you guys three methods, hopefully you guys underjoy and understand, uh, underjoy, <laughs> enjoy and, and understand all of them. I'm sorry that I kind of mix up my words and I get a little slurred in speech while I'm going here, and I know I talk fast, that's why I'm putting everything down in the description below that you guys might need to know. Uh, thank you guys for your support on videos, as always, you guys know I appreciate it, especially with this division video from yesterday, and hopefully this division video will get the same support as well. Um... But yeah, some of my newest videos are popping up on the screen, the Division video from yesterday, plus the uh, Let's Talk kind of video game rant from like two weeks ago or a week and a half ago will be on the screen as well. Plus a little fish icon for you to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Come join the Fishbowl where I do Division, Overwatch, Fortnite, and any other game that I feel like doing on the channel. I mean, Division's kind of new, but you guys know what I'm saying. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you guys for your continued support. As always, you guys mean the world to me. Um, like I said, hope you guys have a great holiday, good holiday break, everything like that. I'll see you guys next video. Um, yeah, I've been Wolf for Fish. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Take care and goodbye.